recapping some trade setups. Stand by. By the way, do we have any um, do we have any new people here today? Anybody new? I know we had some emails that went out here recently. Anybody brand new to the room? First time in here? I think we had a couple of folks. Saw some questions earlier. Some of the questions were related to uh, some of the indicators on the chart, so I wanted to talk about that for a second. One of the things that we teach in our in our uh, webinars is to do somewhat of a pre-market assessment. So in this case, for instance, we're looking at EMD. This is the mid-cap 400. It's ten dollars a tick. It's a four-range chart. We trade pretty much exclusively range bar charts. Range bar charts. And uh, this is the pre-market. This is overnight Pacific. Midnight Pacific's right here. So this is what it did overnight. It had a little blip up here overnight. Put in a swing high up here near 846-ish, plus or minus a few ticks. And then started to kind of make a little drop here over uh, sort of pre-market here. See how it's kind of getting a little series of lower highs and lower lows? Now, right before the open and right at the open, we had a, sw a couple of swing levels. We had one here at 37. Remember we called this out? 37, remember? That support level. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I've been Skyping with some traders talking about that short there. Um, and then we had a swing at resistance up here near 41. And you can see here, obviously, it took it out. Uh, by the way, if you did get caught short, if you had a sell order, or you had line trader, which is part of our pro package. We have a line trader. We'll show a little bit later. But uh, if you got nicked in here when it took that little swing out there, you, know, you felt some heat. You know, it was upside down a little bit until she broke. There was also a little pause here right around this 35 level. You know, if you missed this initial entry, you had a little pause right in here where you could have actually caught uh, probably about half of that short. And then right here, it bounced and took you out somewhere right in this area right here. Just a couple ticks shy of 31 right in there. Come down, we put in a little double bottom. We start to do a retrace here. We have another short trade set up going into the news. Remember we said you want to be flat into the news? And what, part of the reason, obviously, you want to be flat into the news is that I want to just show this real quick. This is the shotgunning of bars that you have. Here, here's the beginning of 7 o'clock over here. And here's the end of, here's 701 over here. So all these bars. Now, this might look like a long trade in here. Like, like you might have actually caught along, but you have to understand, this, this is probably the better part of 40, 50, maybe 60 bars that printed in the span of like a minute. All right, so in actuality, there was really no trade here, okay? This just shotgunned up, and you really don't want to try to trade this because in, in actuality, you don't know where you're going to get filled. You don't know where you're going to get taken out. And, and, of course, you can see here, within two, three minutes later, it's a shotgun back down. So essentially in here, in the first basically five to ten minutes after the news, you really kind of want to watch what's happening here. Now, if you recall, let me come over here and talk about what happened after the news. We remember we had it, it, uh, right around 7.10, right before 7.15, uh, we called out a little swing right here. Remember, 33? Remember we said 33? Watch for a break of 33, the upside. See how it kind of meandered up, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, boom, and then took it out. And this was the little 40 tick pop you could have taken right here. Uh, anyway, after the news, of course, uh, we went into some chop. You can see we went into consolidation. And then I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think Rich actually called out the short trade here. Um, to be honest with you, can you hear me? Testing audio. You guys hear me okay? Hello? Yeah. Stand by one second. I got lost audio. Testing audio, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. All right, all right, sorry. Uh, anyway, back over here. So I, uh, to be honest with you, by the time we hit this 7.30, 8 o'clock patch over here, I was pretty much done. But I, there were two things that I recall Rich called out. We had a, a clear break of 33 right here. Um, I don't know if anybody took that, but if you didn't, uh, I believe he called out this level at 30. He said, if it comes and it takes 30, I'm going to jump in. And sure enough, it did right here. See it? 
it just ripped right through it all the way down here and then I think he got out I'm not certain where he got out here it was down near this 25 26 area you had a good stop out down here near the swing lows in the morning right here that was the final trade of the morning right here now of course you see after we've had this nice huge run down now we're starting to 2460 is that where he got out <laughs> wow that was a couple of ticks off the low good for him yeah 2460 nice trade I mean even if you caught the, the short he called out here at 30 uh, down to 25 24 60 this trade alone was another like 45 ticks I mean so you're talking about you know you're talking about 40 plus ticks here 45 plus ticks there you had uh, this initial short over here 33 down to 28 this was the better part of 50 60 ticks right here and another little follow-on 30 tick pop short so what we're trying to show here is that there's lots of good volatility in these markets to uh, to get you in and out and all you have to do is sort of position your timing watch for some swing levels and and pull the trigger when you see it you can use uh, the one of our tools line trader to get in uh, when it breaches a level and you get filled uh, it actually puts in targets and stops and manages the trade so you don't have to drag your stops around for instance here you could have put position line trader right here right under 30 would have filled you on one of these bars right here to the short side manage the trade manage the trade boom you get out down here when it breaks the stop any questions on EMD trades uh, from this morning questions on EMD I'm gonna flip over I have another a couple charts to show here I want to show NASDAQ it was a little bit different than the, uh, than the EMD setups by the way we're gonna take screenshots of, of what you see here and we're gonna send them out to obviously our members and, and those of you in a free trial so you can look at the setups and kind of learn them and we also record these little um, trade recaps too so you can listen to it again and really kind of get a sense of how the trades set up what I want to show here on the left is this is the pre-market setup on NASDAQ a little bit different than the other markets you had a really tight consolidated range right over here around just before six o'clock now I wasn't here I know we opened the room was a question when we opened the room 555 Pacific that's when we opened the room so just just a few minutes before uh, six o'clock now you can see at six o'clock there was actually a break I don't know Gary did you guys call this short on NASDAQ right in here I think you did we did get that short yes yeah because I, I when I came in I came in over here you were already short I think right in here yeah and I think it might have stopped out somewhere in here and then of course shortly after the open you had another another nice little blip down here to the short side now you got this bounce uh, by the way if you're wondering what these large dots are you see these in the trading room as well this is uh, what we call guidance dots from our pro package uh, you can set those to uh, for instance when we're trading a four sometimes we'll use a 10 or a 12 range guidance chart guidance basically shows whether we're trending and support resistance levels and whether we should be trading the short or the long side so for instance here this was telling you you were looking for shorts see how you're underneath the guidance dots and then basically we blip up through it here on this little bounce and then pretty much it was trying to show you to stay to the long side all the way till it broke over here but now you know you may or may not have taken any trades in here here for instance you had this rifle shot up here to uh, 2314 resistance level we pull back I you probably didn't take this one this was the shotgunning of the news effect there was really no trade there just like the other equities just a big old shotgun effect there uh, and then you might have taken a trade or two in the middle here but they I, I, they really wouldn't have given you much depending on your entry and your exit was you had a couple of scratch trade here scratch trades in fact when this was chopping around if you recall we said let's put a big old box around it and stay out of the middle and I think Gary actually drew a box on it like this you see right here but anyway over here right about when the other equities broke right around 750 Pacific you did have a nice short setup on NASDAQ let's blow that up and take a good look at it now this is something you see all the time see how the actual uh, break of the support level was right in here right just within a few ticks of that 2300 mark now this is not unusual to see this type of activity and sometimes it's quick sometimes it isn't sometimes the retracements have, have you know aren't as deep but here you have a here you have a chance to get in boom it breaks it comes all the way down just shy of 2296 and then you get this nice bounce and notice how you see this all the time support becomes resistance see how it comes up and hits its head right here it's its head right here so what I'm saying is this you see this a lot of times see it breaks support 
blips up back to resistance. Sometimes it'll come a little further. Sometimes you'll see it come up into here, right? Sometimes it might check up into here and then roll. Or sometimes it might not go quite that far. It might stop a little short. So this is a critical juncture. This is the area you really have to watch. In this case here, of course, it, it, it broke and rolled. And if you didn't get the retracement, of course, you could have taken it when it came through support positioning line trader right here, just above this 2296 area. Either way, um, Roosty, all the equities broke down very nicely. You had a short, 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 and then you probably stopped out somewhere on the bounce around 84, 85 down here. See, so I come back through stealth and take out the stop dots. So in, actual, in actuality, your trade from start to finish would have been somewhere something like this on NASDAQ. So we teach this, you know, don't, if, you're, if you're brand new to the room, I know there's some folks that just, this is like your first time in the room, just don't, don't feel intimidated that you see all this. Um, it's, it takes a little bit of time to learn it. You have to attend a couple of webinars, uh, you know, watch a couple of videos, study a couple of charts, watch it in real time. And then, you know, sort of, uh, you got to really pick and choose your spots where you're going to get in. And I would suggest only focusing on one or two instruments. Pick one or two instruments that you want to really uh, learn and watch. Another good one's the dollar index. I think before we came over here, Gary and Rich were talking about a nice trade on the dollar index. That's $5 a tick. Sometimes it has really nice moves, just like this. Sometimes it's a little choppy. But DX is a good little one to watch, too. Any questions on NASDAQ? How we traded NASDAQ this morning? Questions on NASI? All right, uh, I think that's what I had. Rich here, did you have something you wanted to show? All right, actually, yeah, I'm going to show. Uh, there's actually another trade setup forming here. We're going to show it here if I can do it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, you should be able to see the uh, the Russell, right? See. Right now, because I want to see him take the swing out, which I just did. And I'm going to go ahead and, and activate the short entries again now. See how I did that? If we come up to the line in the sand here, I'm going to punch uh, market shorts just to demonstrate this, okay? So we're coming up. We're going to let the auto trader take it. It's just going to be a one contract trade now. It was setting for two, but as we get this long run, it's gone to a one. These were all the probes that we had uh, questions on, and we'll show that in a minute. But right now, the auto trader, what it's looking to do, if we start to break down through here again, it's going to go short. But if we pop up again, I'm going to try to lead it and, uh, and uh, hit, for demonstration purposes here, hit the, uh, hit the market shorts. Okay, so let's just watch how this plays out. This is how you can trade in real time uh, for yourself. Right now, this is in sim to demonstrate it, but you can you can work this yourself. So right now, we're just kind of watching this bar. The auto trader is watching it too to see, and there it is. Okay, so we 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 beat the we 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 beat it here. Okay. Now I don't know if you know we're going to come down and make another low. Uh, Probably the good thing to do is when, if it comes down here and, say, checks up the level, if you just wanted to scalp this out, you can. Uh, but we're just going to demonstrate the, the trade. This was a trade here that was taken using the one quantity and then the close button. Steve so Seward said buy the cover. It covered it here. After you get a long run down like this, and let's go recap the run. Let me just kind of shorten this up a little bit. Right. We started off the run here. And so it took short. Uh, this was set for two, two contracts. I want to keep an eye on this over here so I can show this. Okay. It was set for two contracts. Took the first uh, trade out at 40 ticks, and then uh, the trail stop got hit. Re-entered again. And then we got the nice long run. So we hit the first one at 40. We were able to get the profit target on this one. Okay. Came back and did one more. Right. And then at that point in time. Uh, it hit the first target but couldn't get to the second. And that's when I went ahead and toggled off the quantity uh, two. So it just took a single entry here, right? And now all it is is a single entry again. Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to uh, 
run out of steam here, and we're going to come up, as we're trying to do now, we're trying to test this line in the sand. If we take this out right here, that'll be obviously a good sign. We're working off a of green stealth right now. But it's really going to make its moment decision here if we're going to try to come down, test lower, or if we're going to push up one more time. Now, again, from a trade management standpoint, uh, if you were trading this and you've got anywhere near this profit in here, we've got a little bit more profit working on this trade. If it were to come back up through here, I would just hit the close button and get out and say that's going to be it for the trades. Uh, you know, uh, And that's partially because you've had such a good run here. If it came back up again and tested the line in the sand, you may want to nibble one more time. But progressively, what you want to do when you get these runs is you want to start to wind down the type of entries. So if you were a two-lot trader here, eventually, once you start giving it up like this, go over to a one-lot or don't even take the trade. Right? Or, you, you know, If you're trading a four-lots, if you're a four-lot trader, you can get the four-lot trade here. You can cut it down to maybe three or two here. Then you can go down to one. You know, you're just going to progressively bring your risk down so that when the market does eventually turn and give it up, you're not going to uh, give too much back. Okay. So in this particular trade, we would be we would be fast to protect up here. Obviously, that would result in maybe a twenty or thirty dollar loss if it comes up. But after you've had a nice run like this, uh, it's a good way to go. So let's just keep an eye on it. Let's see what it does. And uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to try to find the bunt chart that I mentioned that we can uh, do as well. The background on this, uh, Denton, is is using the uh, the trend filter. It's using this big trend filter right here. It's using the 34. Okay, so we're about to come up through there. If we if we just there it is. Going to go ahead and close the position. Took a small loss. Okay, but that's okay. That's how you manage your trade. So basically what you're showing here is you know you had a profitable trade here, you had a really big trade here, you had another one that resulted in a profit, then a loss on both. You had one more on a one lot, and we gave it one more shot up here, right? And that's how you're you're just kind of kind of winding down the tunnel until eventually um, you're done. Okay? Maybe we were premature here. Maybe we should have stayed, but that's okay. I wanted to demonstrate how that you know, as you come down, you can manage your risk here. These are deep probes only. These are and, and here's the setup. So remember when we talked about this, the uh, what we're looking at here is we we get a we get our probe set up here, right? And if you're manually trading it, you could enter here. The auto trader has a little bit uh, uh, of, a, of a different type of algorithm that tries to get you a little better trade setup if you can, uh, and that's what it did here. So it got you short up in here. You see it got short up in here again. So it's basically doing what we talked about. Got you short here, short here, and then uh, short here. So you said I have the new scripts, but it doesn't have the breakout 7A indicator. <clears throat> Saeed, what this one is is the uh, it's called the the, the uh, breakout trail stops conservative. So you do have those. You do have that indicator in your package. The auto trader doesn't automatically put it up. If you want, you 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 put it up manually. Okay. Well, that trade was working out, but like I said, I wanted to show that for the purposes of. Uh, teaching this trade would have gone on to make some pretty good money. So let me show the uh, book chart. Let me find that from this morning.
I think we might have lost audio, Rich. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I was I had muted myself. Uh, this is the Bunt again trading. Uh, caught a very nice trade early on. Two contracts. Basically uh, went out at your uh, 800 big green, which is 400 per contract, right? And then what did we do after that? We basically got into this chop. Chop here, chop here, 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 and here. Now I can show... If, if I try to bring another strategy up, up, let me try to do that. I can show how to, how it could have be it could be taking these probe trades down here, these deep probe trades. See, our line in the sand was way down here, and uh, I can demonstrate that it would be taking probe trades in here, here, uh, depending on where you did here, and eventually, you know, it would have taken off to the upside. Let me see if I can do that. I'm going to try to pause this. Uh, screen and see if I can bring that up. So just bear with me for a, a minute or two here. In the meantime, while we're doing that, if there's any questions, uh, Charles or Gary, that you guys can see that you can maybe field uh, while I get this up. Uh, well, there was a couple coming in from Saeed here, but uh, it was related to the other chart you had up, so I think we'll have to circle back on that. Oh, okay. By the way, while Rich is doing that, just a heads up, we do have a um, Viper Pro uh, webinar tonight, uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, and we'll send reminder links out here shortly. Should be a good one. We cover all the um, take questions on the Viper Pro uh, package, all the tools that are in there, the auto traders, various uh, settings and what have you. It's usually pretty good. We get a good turnout for that. If you have a chance to make it, try to come by Viper Pro webinar tonight, 5 o'clock Pacific. We're also doing a, a, a <clears throat> webinar today with Online Traders Central, 1.30 Pacific, so after the market closes. If you have a chance, we're doing a little uh, webinar with those guys over there. And then uh, heads up, too, uh, we have a Ninja webinar early. Got a couple of webinars on Saturday morning, so keep your eye out for those. So it should be should be a good rest of the week. Uh, Greg asking here uh, if we could go over. We'll circle back after this to the TF chart and, and take a quick peek at the settings before we wrap. All right. Okay. By the way, is my audio coming through okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Coming through fine. It was a little weak earlier. I don't know why, but it's better now. Are you um, able to get that chart set up over there, Rich? Oh, there we yep. go. All right. All right. So this is a continuation. Then after uh, after we had the big move, what you can basically do is start to take these uh, these probe trades down in here. Okay. Now you can see this one actually had some pretty good profit in it, and so the settings were a little bit wider. It was trying to go for a bigger uh, move, but a lot of times what you can do is you can tighten up your uh, your profit targets. So instead of going for the 80 tick target if you went for a 20 or 30 tick you would have gotten in here maybe back in here uh, you know several times in here I'll, I'll try to show that in a second but uh, 
this is just trading one contract. This one actually, uh, because you didn't get out and it's not using break even, came down and just got you out here. If your stop was a little bit bigger, you know, uh, uh, you would you would obviously stay in this trade. But if you wanted to scalp it, so in other words, if you're trying to come in here and scalp and and uh, and come back in here and scalp and then come in again, let's see if we can show that. So on that particular setting, we'll go to our uh, strategy manager here. And we'll try to scalp it out instead. So instead of going for uh, an 80 tick profit target, let's try to go for 20. See what happens. And so your net was actually bigger, but of course then you you know you miss this big move. But so here here's your long on a scalp. Another long scalp, another long scalp. See, every time you're coming down here and testing these, you're getting back in your probes. And as you broke out, one of the nice features about this is uh, yellow bar probe wasn't activated in here, right? There was no yellow bar probe activated. But as you broke out through here, in real time, if you wanted to, you could have turned on the yellow bar probe entry by going like this and it would have taken this trade down in here or it would have taken this trade down in here. So this is a, a way you can selectively, if you're here as well, uh, you know, monitor this. We're making new highs as, as we're talking here. But this is another nice feature and we talked about it uh, in the video. There's a video that goes along with this. You're able to toggle these buttons on uh, and take, take this trade if that's what you want or take the trade here. Now, if you don't want an, another yellow bar probe, uh, but maybe you want to take the, the red bar probe, which it's already set for, you can just toggle it off. And now it wouldn't take another yellow bar probe. It would only take another uh, deep probe. So another nice feature to do this. But so you, you can see there's two ways to go about this. You know, one is to take the trade on a scalp. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's one scalp, two, three scalps in here. Uh, the other is to try to go for the runner, or you can use a combination. You can, if you're trading two contracts, you can go take one for 20 ticks, and then maybe back to break even. Take the other one for 20 ticks, back to break even, and then 20 ticks. Let me show that. So the way you would do that, real fast. I know this is kind of more like a support type, but uh, the way you would do that. Let's, let's make sure our stops are the same here. Okay, we're going to go back to quantity one and quantity two. So we've got 80 ticks on one, 20 ticks on the other. We'll go ahead and activate our break even stop here. So we're going to activate our break even stop. We're going to set it uh, to 20 ticks as well. So you always want to have your break even to where your first profit target is. Okay, so now what we should be getting here. Right, we're going to get a trade here with one profit and then a stop. We're going to get another trade with one profit and a break-even stop. We're going to get a third trade with a profit. The break-even never gets engaged, and then we're going to roll higher. So, let's see what that would look like. I don't know why we got the second one out here. I got to recheck. But anyway, you you get the picture, I think. Uh, Sayed is asking you put two tr uh, strategies on one chart. Uh, you can Sayed, but you can only have one active at once. You can't have more than one active at once. You'll have a problem with that. So one has to be disabled, the other one can be enabled. You know what, I, I don't think I had the right stop activated here, did I? Let's check that.
Yeah, I did. I'll have to just see what I'm doing here. Anyway, uh, what do we have? We had a question going back to the... Yeah, we're, we're kind of running out of time a little bit here, Rich. We have a commitment at uh, 9 o'clock uh, related to the 1.30 deal oh, today. Oh, so, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I think it was related to the uh, uh, settings on Roosty. I mean, if we can pop it up, you know, like in the next minute or two, we could go ahead and take care of it. Otherwise, we'll have to cover it later on today, perhaps. I think it was, hey, Rich, uh, real quick on D David R.'s question about the toolbar not showing. David, you need to go to right-click and go to uh, Properties and make sure your toolbar is turned on because that uh, bar up at the top there where it says Markets Longs and all that, that's the toolbar. See, that trade would have worked out very nice, but uh, that's trading sometimes. So anyway, want to see the settings real fast? Uh, just real quick, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we got to wrap. All right, so all you're taking here is the deep probe, right? Your breakout mode is off. You're using your trend filter. Uh, you're trading uh, quantity one and quantity two. You've got 80 ticks on the first profit target, 20 on the second. Your stops are 15, although I recommend going bigger to 20. Right, your break even is off, and you want to give. Uh, if you're trying to go for bigger runners, you want to just, you know, loosen up your triggers a little bit here. Twenty and thirty, twelve and eighteen, and then your crank stop. You don't want to get taken out too fast, so this crank stop is just loosened up. You you always want to have your crank stop bigger than your second trigger. Right, you never want to have them the same, so we'll go twenty, thirty, and then fifty. Okay, and that's the settings. All right, well, I guess well, we do have a commitment. We're going to have to go. So any other questions before we wrap up here? Uh, did we lose Charles and Gary? No, still here, but getting ready to... Stepped away for just down. a second. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, going to stop.